Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video I'll be showing you the most important tips and tricks for your Oppo K3. By the way guys, I'll also be making a dedicated video for the best features where I'll be showing you all the features offered by this phone. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, I want to first start off with the off-screen clock, which is also called as always on display on other phones. So to enable that you need to go to settings, then select display and brightness. Now over here we have off-screen clock. Now just enable it and you can see the always on display or off screen clock. So here's the preview. Now you can also schedule it to save some battery as well. Usually I prefer to keep it on from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. So I get to use the cool feature and still save some battery. Now going on next, this phone has a pretty fast fingerprint scanner. Here's a quick preview. Next, this phone has an in-display fingerprint scanner and this is the animation right out of the box. It is pretty fast and it looks pretty cool. But on this phone, we also get the option to change the fingerprint animation. So to do that, go to settings, then select fingerprint. Now select fingerprint once again, enter your password. And over here we have animation styles. So these are the different animations. We have moonlight, gravity, flash, and colorful cloud. I'll go with flash. Now here's the new animation. It's pretty fast, but it's still visible. Next, even though this phone has a pretty fast fingerprint scanner, if you still want to use face unlock feature, you can still do that. You can enable it or you can enroll face unlock by going to settings and select fingerprint face and passcode. Select face and enroll your face. Now once you're done, these are the settings that you get. I've enabled this particular toggle to improve face unlock speeds even in low lighting conditions. And I've chosen this second option. So whenever I press the power button, face unlock works. And as you have seen, face unlock is once again pretty fast. So that's face unlock and my suggestion is if you're planning to use this phone for a very long time, say like two to three years, I'll suggest you not to use the face unlock feature at all. This is a moving part. It has a motor and it has a limited number of cycles. So it's better to use that pop-up camera as little as possible. So just in case if you have already enrolled face unlock and if you want to remove it, just open face unlock settings, then click on delete enrolled face and just confirm and it will be removed. Now, every time your front camera pops up, you hear a small mechanical motor sound. If you don't like that or if you want to add a different music to it, you can do it from sound settings. For that, go to settings, then select sounds, then select sound and vibration. Over here, we have options for pop-up camera movement sound effects. So by default, it is set to none, but we also have technology, mechanical, musical. I prefer technology. And here's a quick preview. Now let me do that once again. It might be a little weird, but it adds a nice touch to it. By the way, guys, in sound settings, you also have Dolby Atmos sound enhancement. So you can use that to improve the audio experience from the speaker. And you can also change to different profiles to optimize the audio experience. Now let's check out some camera related features. So this is a camera interface. And on this phone, we have panorama mode for selfie as well. Now this is a front facing camera and this is how wide it is. Now we also have panorama mode. So now you need to take a picture and twist your phone very slowly. Here we go. So here's the regular selfie and here's the selfie taken with the panorama mode. I was able to take it only on one side. As you can see, it is still pretty wide. Next, we have some camera related gestures. First, we have touch to capture. To enable it, go to settings, then enable touch to take a photo. Once you do that, you can just touch the display to take a picture. Here we go once again. And there we go. Next for selfies, we also have the palm gesture where we can simply show our palm to take a picture or a selfie. And here we go. Once again, so just show your palm to take a selfie in two seconds. It's definitely handy to take selfies. Next, we have some new navigation methods. So for that, let's go to settings, then select smart convenient or convenient aid, and then select navigation keys. So the new one is swipe gestures from both sides. Now this is just like MIUI gestures or Android Q based gestures. So if you want to go back, you can swipe from the left side or right side in this way. And you also get a cool animation. You just go back a step. If you swipe from the bottom, it takes you home. And if you swipe and hold, it takes you to the recent apps. So these are the new navigation gestures and they're definitely better than the swipe up gestures. But if you're going to use the stock case that you get inside the box, it's kind of hard to use the new navigation gestures on the left and right sides because of the raised lip. So if you are going to use the same case, it's better to use the same old swipe up gestures. I'll just show you the swipe up gestures now. Once again, go to navigation keys and over here we have swipe up gestures. Now, if you want to go back a step, you can swipe from the left side or right side 
corner and you go back step, you can swipe from the center to go home and you can swipe and hold for recent apps. So this is what works really well with the stock case. By the way, we also have Android Pi based gestures, but it's not that good. So I would not recommend you to use that. So these are the Android Pi based gestures. Just stick with swipe up gestures. Now you might wonder, if you're using these swipe up gestures, there is no more home button. So how will you trigger Google Assistant? For that, once again, go to convenience aid and enable this toggle. Once you do that, you can press and hold the power button to trigger Google Assistant. And there we go. That's Google Assistant. Now, if you want to see power options, you can press and hold this power button for three seconds and you'll get the power options. And there we go. Next, we have screen of gestures. To enable them, go to settings, then select convenience aid. Over here, select gesture and motion. Now select screen of gestures. Now enable it. Now these are the top four gestures. First, we have double tap to wake. Just enable it. And once your phone is locked, you can double tap the screen to wake it up. And there we go. Next, we have draw O to open the camera application. So once you enable it, just draw a O when the display is off to open the camera application quickly. It works on the lock screen and always on display or off screen clock. So you can do it anywhere, anytime to open the camera application. Next, we have draw V to toggle the torch. So once enable it and draw a V to turn on the torch. And to turn it off, you can press the power button and it goes off. Next, we have music controls where we can draw two lines to play or pause. We can draw a greater than or less than signs to play the next and previous songs. Next, we also have other screen of gestures where we can add custom shortcuts. Like say, I can draw a W to open WhatsApp and do other crazy stuff like that. So definitely check that out. Now going on next, if you want to open multi-window mode or the split screen mode, this is what you need to do. First, you need to go to the recent apps page and then click on this button on the application that you want to open in split screen mode and then click split screen. Once you do that, that application will open in the top window and then you can select the secondary application from the list over here. Or else you can also go to the home screen and then select the secondary application from the list over here. There we go. Now, another way to open split screen mode is by a gesture. Just swipe up using three fingers and it opens split screen mode. And there we go. Now this feature should work right out of the box, but for some reason, if it's not working for you, you need to go to settings, then scroll to the bottom, then select app split screen and make sure this particular toggle is enabled. Once it is enabled, you can swipe up using three fingers to open split screen mode. There we go. Now I'm going to show you how to record calls automatically on your phone. For that, open the phone dialer. Now click the settings button. Now select call recording and enable this toggle. Once you do that, all the calls will be recorded automatically on your phone. Now I'm going to show you how you can change your default apps. Let's say you want to change your default launcher, browser, video player, music player, or anything. This is what you need to do. First, go to settings, scroll to the bottom. Now select app management. Over here, select default apps. Now from this page, you can change your default launcher. That's default home screen. If you have no launcher, this is where you need to come to change your default launcher. And I would definitely recommend you to change your default browser to Google Chrome. Just select Google Chrome and select change browser. And now Google Chrome is your default browser. So in this way, you can also change your default SMS application, phone dialer application, camera app, gallery app, music player, and so on. I'll definitely recommend you to do that. Now going on next, if you want to display the battery percentage on this status bar, this is what you need to do. Go to settings, then select notification and status bar. And over here, enable this toggle. Once you do that, you can see the battery percentage on the status bar inside the battery icon. In the same way, if you want to display the network usage on the status bar, enable this toggle. And there we go. Here we have the network speed. Next, if you want to display the memory usage in the recent tabs page, this is what you need to do. Go to settings, then select additional settings. Scroll down a bit and enable this toggle. Display RAM or memory information for recent tasks. And once you do that, you can check out the memory usage in the recent apps page. Next, if you want to take a screenshot on this phone, there are multiple ways to do it. First, you can use the buttons. Just press the volume down and power button both at the same time and your phone will take a screenshot. Another way to take a screenshot is by using this smart bar. So this is called a smart bar. I'll talk more about it in a second. So over here, we have a quick shortcut. Just click it to take a screenshot. Now, my favorite way to take a screenshot is by using the gesture. Just swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. Just a quick reminder, you need to swipe down for screenshot and swipe up for split screen mode. Now, for some reason, if this gesture is not working for you, this is what you need to do. Go to settings, then select convenience aid, then select gesture and motion and make sure this particular toggle is enabled. If it is enabled, you can take a screenshot in this way. Next, we also have long screenshot. Let's say if you want to take a screenshot of this app, just take a regular screenshot. You can either use the buttons or the gesture. 
I'll use the gesture. Now click long screenshot. And now you need to scroll this page. And once you're done, just select done and you'll get a long screenshot. There we go. Next, we can also record the screen on this phone. Once again, there are two ways to do it. You can either use the toggles. For that, go to the notification area. And if you can't find the recorded toggle, you need to click this button. And you have this toggle over here. Now just long press and pull it up. And now we have the toggle. Just click it and give it permissions for the first time. And then you'll be able to record the screen. So here's the preview. Another way to do it is by using this smart bar. Once again, swipe on the right side near the power button. You'll see a small indication as well. And click this button to start video recording. Now finally, let's talk about the smart bar. You can see a small indicator over here. Every time you swipe over it, you get this bar. These are your quick applications. These are your quick actions. And these are some shortcuts. Now you can add or remove applications from here. Just press this plus button and you can add extra applications just by doing that. And if you want to remove any application from the list, you can click this minus button and those applications are removed. There we go. Now let's say you're watching a video. You can swipe from the left side to trigger smart bar. So guys, these are the most important tips and tricks for your Oppo K3. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. And if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. If you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off. Have a nice day.